Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to create a text overlaid with a specific texture. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find that texture. In the classroom, if you scroll down to materials, I have uploaded some for you. So you can search through there first and find however many you're interested in. Remember, we're going to be creating three different ones though, so you'll need three. Or, if you're looking for something a little more specific, you can go to unsplash.com or Pexels, one of the free-for-use websites, and type in whatever you're looking for. I really like this one, so whenever you find one you like, you're going to download. And it should pop up in your downloads bar. Even though I'm using my Mac, it will still show in a downloads bar. Let me show you how to download one from my folders, though. Any one you like, you're just going to click on it. double click and then you'll see the download button right in the top right. So I'm just going to click that and it will pop down into that downloads bar next to my other image. Alright, so they are now downloaded to your computer. They are going to be in your downloads folder. My downloads folder is right there. Yours, of course, will be somewhere a little bit different. Once you've got them downloaded, you can close out of all those windows. Because we're using an internet-based program, we want to close out of every extra internet-based thing we can so that it does not slow down our program. I'm going to hit New Project, and I'm going to title it something that makes sense to me. So I'm going to go Texture Text. And then I'm going to go to 10 by 8 inches and up the DPI, the resolution, to 300 because that is print quality and create. All right, so now the first thing you're going to do is create your piece of text. So I'm going to hit that little T, same thing that we would see in Photoshop, and I'm going to click in my document and type my word. When you're doing this project, you want to think of words that could stand alone. So something that is inspirational would probably be better, um, but something like believe and then maybe the texture on it is going to be clouds or something really ethereal. I'm going to do the word create over um, with the, the paint cans and that makes sense to me. So right now it's set to 24 and that is extremely tiny in my canvas. So I'm going to just drop this down, this arrow down and slide to the right. Now that's still pretty small but I'm all the way at the right. So some people think that you can't make it any bigger but all you're going to have to do now is just manually type in until you get a size you want. Make sure that this fills the whole board. So you're going to keep upping it little by little until you get a size that works. So I'm going to go to 650 and see what that looks like. All right. So I'm going to keep that centered right in the middle. I think it needs a period just to have a little bit more of a design element. And that looks pretty good. All right, so now let's talk about the font choice. This font is actually a little bit skinny. So what I'm going to do is click back on my type tool, highlight my text, and I'm going to see if I can get this to be thicker. So in the book drop-down menu, you can change the font style. By clicking bold, it gets thicker. But the problem is it now goes off my canvas. So I need to drop the size down a little bit. So I dropped it down to 600 and that works better. Please don't settle for the first font. Go through the whole book and find something that works for whatever word you're doing. It doesn't necessarily have to be bold block letters. Think about the word you're doing and how the font works for that. So this font is called destroy. Maybe that's going to be your word. Maybe that text helps to replicate that um, sentiment. I'm just going to click a different one just to show you another one. And the period on this one looks really funny, so not something I want to do. Distant Galaxy, not, again, something that kind of works with my create vibe. So I am going to keep going. I'm going to go back to the deja vu because I really liked the simplicity of that. And back to bold. All right. So once you've got your font selected, remember, it's not going to be as quick as me. I'm just showing you. You're going to spend a lot of time finding a font that works best for your word and for your texture. So I've now got my font settled and I'm going to find my image and place it. So I'm going to open it up and place it in the document. I'm going to go to my downloads 
and date modified, it should be somewhere at the top. And I'm just going to double click it, it will open up into the browser. It may take longer to load for you, depending, you just have to be patient. Alright, so once you get your image in the document, you have to make it fit the text. So if I just leave it like this, it won't fill the text completely. So what I'm noticing is a horizontal landscape orientation might be better. So I'm going to grab that arrow, the corner, so I get the turn arrow, and rotate, rotate, rotate. So again, the internet-based programs are a lot slower than our Photoshop. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. Once I get it somewhere I like, I'm going to make it big enough to fill the whole word. I don't need to worry about the whole document. I just need to worry about the actual text. Remember, when you drag the corners, you will, are less likely to distort the proportions. If you press and hold shift, it will lock the proportions as you're dragging. Once you're good, either hit enter or the check mark and it will apply the changes. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm going to create what's called a clipping mask. So I want to clip this and mask it inside of the text. So you'll notice that my image is on top of my text layer. So I'm going to go to layer, clipping mask, and I'm going to click. You'll notice that it fills inside of the text only. The background, everything is left completely white, which brings me to a point you can change the background color if need be, and I can also move around this image. I've got my move tool selected. I'm going to drag up, and you'll be able to see how the image changes within my word itself. So you need to, again, play with that until you get an effect that you like. I'm really not liking how much space is in between my letters. I can't see enough of the image, so I might need to go back to my text style and play with the spacing. It is possible that this font is just not going to work, but I just want to kind of hit some of these different presets just to see if that helps. I can go through the fonts again, but just because I selected that font at the beginning doesn't mean I have to stick with it even after I've applied the um, texture layer. So you can go back and you can make changes, so don't worry about that. If I want to color my background, I need to make sure it's unlocked so I can edit it. And then I'm going to select black and just see what that looks like. Make sure you're hitting OK. Our tendency is to go to the top right where Photoshop has OK, but that is actually the closeout button. So if you're wondering why it's not working, you're probably just mindlessly hitting the X. So hit OK, and now my foreground layer is black. You could also have hit the arrows right there and it would switch them. And then your fill can is located underneath the gradient tool, just like in Photoshop. I've got my background layer selected, and then I can click and fill the background with black. And you might like that effect better than a white background. Okay, so again, it's just all about you playing with different settings, getting something that you view as good enough, and then you're going to save it. Okay, so once you've got your first texture text set, then you're going to save it. If this is all done 100%, I don't need to edit it anymore, then make sure you're exporting it as a PNG or a JPEG. And that way you can turn it into the classroom like this. If you are not done, say you need to rush out somewhere and you need to edit this later, please make sure you save as a PSD. Remember, a PSD will save the layers so you can just open it up into the program by going File, Open, and then you would select it and you can edit it later. But if you're all done, then you don't need to keep the PSD. Here is the JPEG. I'll open it up so you can see it. This is what you would upload into the classroom, a JPEG. Okay, the next one I make, I would do find my next texture, figure out what word I'm doing, and then when I create the new project, I would title it Texture Tech Texture Text 2. Then the third one would be Texture Text 3. You want to have that same naming format so you have continuity within. My computer is going really slow right now, so it's not opening. Oh, there we go. All right. So now you can see it in the JPEG, and I think it needs a little bit of work, but overall pretty good. All right, happy creating.